What is going on, Warrior? Welcome to the Pardon My Pancreas podcast. We've got a quick episode for you today because i got to get back to finalizing things for our Fearless Diabetic Summit. Now, today we're covering insulin stacking and a bit of a story from my past when things did not go according to plan. But I also want to make sure that if you are not aware of it yet, we have a free type 1 diabetes-focused virtual summit. It's an event where we all click on the same link and watch videos together. I interviewed 30 type 1 diabetic experts, medical professionals, endos, PAs, dietitians, strength trainers, uh, personal trainers, people who are vegan, people who are low carb, all of these amazing people also living with type 1 diabetes. And I asked them the same one question. I said, hey, if you could travel back in time, back to when you were first diagnosed, if you're given 14 days to coach yourself on living fearlessly with type 1 diabetes, what would you focus on first? to gain freedom and control. Now all 30 plus of those diabetes experts answered that same question, gave us their tips and tricks and strategies that they've learned outside of the doctor's office throughout their lives, decades living with diabetes, and I wanna give you free access to that. So to grab your free ticket, you literally need to go sign up right now before it disappears forever. Grab your free ticket at fearlessdiabetic.com. All right, so make sure you grab that. In fact, I'd rather you pause this, go grab it, and then come back later, because that you do not want to miss out on. It's already thousands of type one diabetics, just like you, who have already registered and are going to be joining us live. Do not miss this opportunity. Go to fearlessdiabetic.com. And before we forget about today's topic, I want to get into our theme song, okay? So today is on insulin stacking. Let's jump into that theme song. I've spent the last 10 years pushing the limits while identifying trends and patterns in my type 1 diabetes management. Follow along as I learn, apply, and share the fitness, nutrition, and lifestyle strategies that I've learned from diabetes experts around the world. The real question is, how can we live fearlessly with diabetes while maintaining stable blood sugars? This podcast is here to give you the answer. My name is Matt Vandevecht, head coach and co-founder of FTF Warrior, and welcome to Part of My Pancreas. Alrighty, so insulin stacking, what is it? Before I get into my story, you should probably know some uh, surrounding definitions, right? So insulin stacking is when you take insulin on top of other insulin injections before the insulin has officially run its course. So if I were to take an insulin injection at two, and then again at 215, and then again at 230, and my blood sugar wasn't going down, maybe it's at 200 or something, right? Giving correction, huh, didn't work. Correction, huh, didn't work. Correction. That's insulin stacking. What's usually going to happen is that those doses are all gonna pair up and they're gonna link arms and they're gonna plummet your blood sugars way too fast and you go, oh no, why did I do that? This is also known as rage bolusing. When you're frustrated with a high blood sugar that just does not seem to budge and you give all of the insulin on top of each other, that's when things get dangerous. So insulin stacking, not always a good idea. It can definitely be dangerous and lead you into some pretty scary situations. Now, back in the day, my, my first medical team was not super helpful, unfortunately. And uh, when I went to them with questions, which still took a while, because initially, if you remember my story, I did not want to own up to my diabetes. I didn't want to live the, the whole diabetic lifestyle. I wanted to pretend it didn't exist, which I don't recommend, because your blood sugars, no matter how much you ignore them, are always going to be there. <laughs> and they will respond to food without insulin. So. Uh, but when I finally decided, hey, I want to get this thing under control, let's figure out the blood sugars, right? I went to my, uh, my medical team and I said, hey, how often can I eat? Is it okay to eat more than just the three meals per day? You know, can I switch it up? Can I eat more? Can I eat less? Uh, and I said, hey, is there a rule for how often I should be injecting insulin? And ultimately they said, yes, there is. It's two hours. I said, okay, that's fair. Why? And they're like, well, by two hours, the majority of the insulin's gone and you don't have to worry about it. So you can just go ahead and eat another meal. Now at this point in my life, the reason I was asking for how often I could eat is that I had a goal in mind. I wanted to hit 200 pounds. I thought it would be so cool to be able to say, I'm 200 pounds of pure muscle, rah! Because never in my life had I ever been 200 pounds. And that nice even number too kind of made me feel better about it. So I was like, all right, let's go for 200. That's the goal. And for me, I've been skinny my whole life, like like bones, right? <laughs> like stick and bone skinny. And a lot of people are like, oh, Matt, don't, we're so jealous. How dare you complain about being skinny your whole life? You don't understand because when I wanted to gain weight, 
I literally had to eat until I felt sick. Like I felt like I was gonna throw up every time I finished a meal because I had to stuff my face full of st so much food that it was uncomfortable. It was not a fun process. I, I did not look forward to eating anymore. And on that road to 200, and of course I was exercising more, so I was building up more of an appetite, right? But I remember times where I was literally curled up on the floor, stomach aches, like I can't eat another bite. But in my head, I'm like, I gave insulin for that meal. I have to eat another bite. You don't want to be in that situation, all right? So uh, now that we've got that out of the way, on the road to 200, I'm like, okay, I need to eat as much as possible. I did all my calculations, I, and at that time, I was getting more into fitness and understanding calorie consumption and all that stuff. So I calculated that I needed 5,500 calories per day. I'm let that sink in for a second. 5,000. 500 calories per day. <laughs> that's a lot. Uh, that's about three people's worth. Three human beings would consume that much in one day on average. That's a lot of calories. So you can see why I was, you know, feeling sick all the time and full. But if I wanted to eat 5,500 calories per day, I had to eat more meals than just three, right? So I ended up having, I tried to eat four, five, six meals a day. And so when they told me insulin, you can give every two hours, I was like, sweet, let's do this. I can eat every two hours, that makes it way easier. Six meals over the course of 12 hours, I can do that. So, that was the new plan. However, my medical team, and you may have already figured this out, they, uh, they weren't 100% correct that insulin is done working at two hours. Unfortunately, it lasts a bit longer than that. And sometimes, depending on the structure of your meal, it can last a lot longer, right? Uh, now, and it's especially your activity levels, and you know, all this tons of variables come into play here, but what I ended up discovering, well, I didn't discover it right away, unfortunately. I'm embarrassed to say that I did not pick up on the patterns that were right in front of my face that entire time, but now, years later, I can look back at those moments and I can say, okay, now I know why on one of these days where I would go and eat uh, an early dinner, 5 p.m., and then my wife would come home from work and we'd have Chipotle. You know, I'd, I'd go into that Chipotle meal with a, a pretty solid blood sugar number. And it's before I had a CGM, so I also didn't know if I was going up or down. I just knew that one static number, right? But I'd go into it with, you know, 130, 140, and I'm like, sweet, I got this. Let's roll into Chipotle. As soon as we go for Chipotle, I pre-bolus, I, I go to eat my meal, and the second I finish my meal, I am shaking, sweaty, plummeting down, I test my blood sugar, 50. Oh, oh no, what happened? What could have possibly happened? I did my normal pre bolus I've had Chipotle before, why are my blood sugars tanking right now? And unfortunately, like I said, I didn't notice those patterns quite early on enough, but now looking back, I know the tail end of that insulin from 5 p.m. was still hitting me at 7, 7.15, 7.30, it was still doing its work. We know now that insulin can actually last three, five, seven hours sometimes. Now, of course, beyond the five hour mark, it's negligible. It's very minimal, but insulin typically lasts from three to five hours. We know that. Now, the bulk of the work the insulin has done, yes, is done around two hours, probably closer to three, but I was told two hours, you're done, go for your next injection. And unfortunately, that knowledge that I didn't have hurt me, right? What you don't know can hurt you. And in that moment, I didn't know what was going on. I thought I did something wrong. What I didn't know is that insulin was still active in my body and I was actually insulin stacking without knowing it. It wasn't a matter of I had high blood sugar so I was injecting for a correction, didn't go down, injecting for a correction, didn't go down, injecting for a correction, didn't go down. No, that's true insulin stacking or rage bolusing. That's doing it on purpose, right? You're well aware that you shouldn't be doing that, then you probably shouldn't be doing that, right? But in that moment, I was not educated on the fact that insulin stacking could cause rapid drops in blood sugar, especially when we look at the macronutrient profile of a Chipotle meal, right? You have chicken, you got a bunch of fat and proteins in there, they're gonna slow the absorption of the meal down, and as a result, the insulin is also going to hit faster than it typically would with the tail end of the previous dose of insulin. So now, of course, looking back, it's starting to make sense, right? We see that the previous dose came into play. The macronutrient profile came into play. The existing dose with the prebolus came into play. My increased activity probably also came into play. A number of variables here we see that with the insulin stacking added on top of it, 
of course I'm going to drop to the 50s. It makes sense. Now, what I want to kind of play with here is A, be very cautious insulin stacking slash I just, I'm going to recommend against it. I don't want you to be worried about those plummeting lows. They're, they're very scary. They don't feel good. And if you don't know why they're happening, it's maddening to wonder why the heck did I just drop 100 points when I did my, my normal routine. I had Chipotle. I did the 10 minute pre bolus thing. Like what's going on? But two is that what you don't know can hurt you. Now, a lot of times they say, oh, what they don't know can't hurt them. That is absolutely incorrect. If you don't know that taking your insulin an hour before you eat is probably going to lead to a low blood sugar, especially if you start in range, that's going to hurt, right? You're going to go low. It's going to be a very scary experience because you're probably going to plummet. You're going to be consuming juice boxes on glucose tabs on whatever else you can find in the kitchen. So what you don't know can hurt you, which means you need to be your own best advocate. You need to seek out information. You need to find what strategies are going to work for you. The best way to do that is through finding others in the, the, the world of type one diabetes who have gone through these things, who have mastered the art of the pre bolus of uh, exercise and diabetes of nutrition of diabetes management overall, right? We have to find people who've done this before and seek out their expertise. Now, of course, right now I've got a special opportunity for you. Is it okay if I share it with you? Of course it is. It's free. I know that you're going to benefit from this. So I'm going to share this with you guys. We have a free virtual summit. As I mentioned at the beginning of this episode, 30 of those experts living with type one diabetes. There are uh, medical professionals. We have doctors, PAs, uh, endocrinologists, CDEs, dietitians, strength trainers, personal trainers, motivational speakers, leaders in the community. All of these people answered the same question. Essentially, how would they coach themselves? on blood sugar control? How would they reset and shortcut their own life with type one diabetes? And you can get access to that for free. And for all you parents out there, there is even a parent that I decided to interview parent of a type one diabetic. And she goes into what she would tell herself when her son was first diagnosed at a young age. Now to gain access to all of this, all you have to do, literally all you have to do is go to fearlessdiabetic.com enter in your email and you're registered. That's it. You're good to go. Now, of course you can upgrade, grab the bonus packages that we prepared for you guys. There's bundles waiting for you with tons of value wrapped inside of them, but the event itself completely free. We're going to have an amazing time. It's live with thousands of other type one diabetics with these experts in the chat with us, the live chats, the experts are going to be there along with myself. We're all going to be hanging out, as a community, and it's going to be incredible. So what I wanted to do, I sent out an email to a few, uh, well, to most of our registrants earlier today. And I said, Hey, why did you sign up for this thing? What are you looking forward to most? What is the reason that you're here? What are you hoping to get out of this summit, this virtual T1D event, right? And I read a couple of them from you. I got tons of responses. So obviously I can't read all of them, but I'm going to summarize here. Okay. We got multiple parents of type one diabetics that are here to learn for their kids to learn how they can help control their, their diabetes with them, right? We've got improve my relationship with food. I want steady and lower blood sugars. I'm here for the T1D community. Uh, I'm here to understand why T1D differs daily. I've heard that one a lot. Uh, struggle with food, learn from people who are actually living with type one diabetes. That's a powerful one. Live a normal life. Understand how you can do that, right? Motivation, inspiration, and connection. I thought that one was powerful. Learn new strategies because we're always learning. Healthier living, holistic coaching, pre bolusing. I am newly diagnosed and looking for information. Looking for freedom with T1D food and exercise. Absolutely incredible. I do not want you to miss out on this. Join the thousands of type one diabetics who have already registered. Go to fearlessdiabetic.com right now, sign up for free, and I'll see you there. Have an amazing day and keep up the fight.